And good morning. Good morning. God is great. All the time. All the time. God is great. Welcome to our church. We want to be food for the hungry and living water for the thirsty. This is a safe place for all ages to worship, to learn, to grow, and to become faithful disciples of Jesus. Children, we celebrate your smile, energy, wiggles, and giggles. Welcome to all who are here today. Let's worship and let's praise God together. We remember that our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Our vision is believing, belonging, and becoming. And we do have a number of announcements that we want to lift up today. We want to uh, celebrate that we have our two worship services on site and also those joining us online, and we celebrate that. And then at 6 o'clock, we have our Ignite service at the Outreach Center. And during the winter months, we have a little bit of a, a treat and a feature of the coffee and cocoa station. And so if you'd like some gourmet hot cocoa, check out the Ignite service at our outreach center, 6 o'clock on Sunday evenings. And the sermon series right now is God Is. Why is it gourmet coffee, hot cocoa? Got gourmet, I don't know, because it is, sounds good. Is it because of the wonderful additions we add to our hot cocoa? It is gourmet because of the wonderful additions, like Andy's mints and um, caramels. What else? Yes. Well, and then your little trick of adding 
This is a game changer, you all. We're going to talk about learning today. This is a learning piece of learning. Mind blown. This is mind blowing. Take hot cocoa packet mm -hmm. and caramel macchiato little creamer. creamer. One. Game changer. One. One. Game changer. Oh, wow. She suggested I tried it. It's I had to have changer. two. I had to have two hot cocos. It was so good. Yes. And now they're going to say, why don't we have the cocoa bar or cocoa station here at the church? <laughs> We did a couple weeks ago. We did. But um, please check out the circuit writer for update, in, updated information. And also a lot of the small groups <clears throat> have started back in this new year. So check those out. And uh, Lent is coming soon. And so we do have a Lenten devotional that we are putting together this year. And so if you would like to participate in this year's Lenten devotional, see me after worship and I'll get you signed up. We still have several days that are available. Wednesday night, our meal is chicken potato soup. So it's potato soup with chicken in it. it sounds really good. I love potato soup. So um, it'll be, it sounds like it's going to be a cold day. They are talking about some white stuff. Ew. Um, so it might be a really good day to come in and have some soup on that day. And currently, the youth have started their enchilada sales. So the youth mission team has started their enchilada sales. So if you're interested, um, we've got one youth mission team. Daniel is here. I'm also going. Is anybody else going that's here? Possibly Mr. Rocky. Yes, Rocky. Yes, Rocky. So if you would like to order enchiladas, you can talk to one of us. We'll get you signed up. We do have chicken, beef, or cheese enchiladas, and we're selling them by the dozen. A couple more things we want to, you may notice that Peanut and Stretch are de back in front and the missions committee has asked that we go ahead and uh, get Peanut and Stretch out and take up that special offering the third Sunday and so we will be doing that. Um, then tomorrow on the third Monday, I want to remind you at 6.30 we have our prayer and healing service right here in the sanctuary and uh, we invite all to come and to participate, have moments of prayer and meditation. Um, also, we want to lift up that during the service, we still have, we're still utilizing our cross with the lights. And so if you have anyone that you would like to specifically pray for before worship, after worship, you may light a candle um, in honor or in memory of those that you are thinking about. So. But as we join our hearts together on this 15th day of January, let's join in our call to worship inspired by Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord who turned to me and heard my cry, who, who lifted me out of the slimy pit, out, out of the mud and, and mire. mire, who set my feet on a rock, giving me a firm place to stand. Who put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. And let us join in our opening songs, Wonderful Words of Life and Thy Word is a Lamp. Let us rise and sing.
And let's sing, Thy Word is a Lamp. You may be seated. And I invite us to sing your song as we prepare our hearts for a time for the young heart. got one little boy. Come, come up here and sit by your mommy. Good morning. I hadn't seen you yet this morning. How are you today? He's alive. That's a good thing. So Pastor Cindy mentioned that we, do you remember the last time we had these things up here? When was that? Yeah, but he doesn't remember when it was. It was on a Sunday. I'm just so proud of you, all these wonderful things. It was COVID. It was COVID. We were just talking about that. March, March 15th, 2020 was the last time we had Peanut and Stretch up no, here. It no, it was February of 2020 the last time. February. Oh, that makes it sound even worse. Yeah. February of 2020 was the last time. That's right. That's right, it was February. February 2020 was the last time we had Peanut and Stretch up here. They've been sitting in the back, standing guard over the back, back there. So do you know why we have Peanut and Stretch, what they're for? For money, right? But do you know what the money goes towards? Things, it goes towards things. Yes, definitely for things. The missions committee, uses the money for different projects. And sometimes it's different each month, correct? It used to be. Is it still? I better verify. Yes, yes. So what is it for right now, do you know? For missions. For missions. <laughs> Aren't you glad I came prepared? Well, so did you notice the words of our first song, Wonderful Words of Life? So what are the wonderful words of life? Where are the wonderful words of life? In the Bible. Do you think, Daniel, my son, that there are other wonderful words that bring us life? So I brought a couple of things that were on my refrigerator. This one is made out to Daniel Borgman. I didn't bring my eyeballs. Daniel, thanks for having the courage to participate in class discussions and sharing your knowledge. Keep working hard and striving for success in science. That came from your science teacher. Is that wonderful? It's so wonderful I hung it on the refrigerator. And then this one was written to me. Thank you so much for providing so many wonderful, interesting, and inspirational programs, worship experience experiences during our stay at home. When did that come? COVID. I realize it has probably taken more time and preparation for this kind of program than the type you are used to doing. 
Just wanted you to know you are awesome, faith-filled friend, and I appreciate you so much. And that's been on my refrigerator for almost three years. So how could those be wonderful words of life to us? Any idea? They encourage us. They encourage us. They give us something to continue working for. So anytime anybody gives you words of encouragement, those are wonderful words of life. Wonderful words of life. Not just words from the Bible. Those are definitely wonderful words of life. But the words of encouragement that we receive from each other, they keep us going. They help us. So we want to encourage each other and help each other. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to try and help each other by taking around cups. So if you have your coins ready, we haven't done this in a long time. So if you have coins ready, Daniel and I are going to come around with cups and we're going to collect some coinage. And we're going to see if not only by our wonderful words, but by our wonderful coins, we can encourage each other. Let's pray. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, Dear God, thank you. Thank you. For all those who encourage us. For all those who encourage us. And for your wonderful words of life. And for your wonderful words of life. Please use this money. Please use this money. To strengthen us. To strengthen us. To encourage us. To encourage us. And for us to be your hands and feet. For us to be your hands and feet. To those who need it. To those who need it. Amen. Let's sing our song of prayer. What joys and celebrations do we want to lift up to God today? Joys and celebrations. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Clint Stewart celebrated his birthday yesterday. He was thrilled that I put it on Facebook. Others. Who 
celebrations. Ken and Robin Curry celebrated an anniversary yesterday. It got up to 40 degrees this past week. That's a joy and celebration. Any others? Yes. Today's altar flowers are from Ken and Robin Curry in honor of their 39th wedding anniversary and for Robin's grandma, Alberta Paul, who turned 105 years young. Wow. And today we pray for Zion United Methodist in Archer and Fairview United Methodist in Central City. Any others? Any other celebrations? Enjoy. I have a dear colleague who was spending time in Hawaii visiting her family and she was concerned about the trip back and so she had me fill in at a wedding in Albion yesterday and so that was a joy to celebrate Jerry and Margo and to celebrate their very big family um, but to celebrate their union that was a joy. Others, any others? You may have noticed that the uh, prayer chain has uh, been uh, growing and we have a number of people that we are lifting up for prayer, especially remembering those that are receiving comfort care. And so let's continue to uh, remember all who are receiving comfort care right now, including uh, this past week we added Margie Leslie to the, the those who are receiving comfort care. So pray for her and also uh, Kathy Johnston's beloved Ken uh, with his cancer and comfort care. Pray for Ken, please. We also want to uh, lift up. I got a great celebration. Let's see if I can find it quick. I have a great response from Dawn Foote. We were praying for Greg's brother. She said, Yesterday, I just wanted to let you know that the doctors decided they were not going to need to just do surgery on Brian. They were monitoring the size of the bleed, and it appears to be resolving on its own. There may be some who might say it would have happened anyway, but I believe it is the power of prayer that made the difference. Thank you for all who lifted him up. So thanks be to God. We know that God answers prayer in so many amazing ways. Any other things we want to lift up today? Pray for our world and pray, pray for those spaces uh, in around our nation. Flooding, tornadoes, even at this time of year. Flooding and tornadoes and wildfires. Just so many natural disasters. And we pray for God's peace. Not just around our nation, but around our world. It's a joy to have peanut and stretch, and I see the one cup of lettuce is really full, so some of you may have forgotten to bring coins, but missions committee says that's okay. <laughs> Great offering today for peanut and stretch. I know we've seen stretch a lot. Peanut's been kind of in the background, but we're glad to have him. Others, yes. Was I surprised last week? Yes. And 8 o'clock was so quiet too because, I mean, they lifted it up, but everybody was really quiet because they didn't give me the cards until the potluck. And so all I can say is it's kind of scary for a pastor to know that they can plan things like that without the pastor knowing. But it was a blessed surprise. I enjoyed going through the cards. In fact, last night I went through the cards again and the wonderful words, wonderful words, um, a blessing. And um, then I also called my family and said, you're not going to believe what the church did. And they said, yeah, we knew too. So yes, um, it was a blessing. It's a blessing. I can't believe it's been 20 years of pastoral ministry. And then eight and a half years of youth ministry before that. So to celebrate Christian ministry and to celebrate this gift is amazing. Um, I had just read an article that over 4,900 pastors walked away from ministry last year. 
And we know that coming through the pandemic has been a challenge for a lot of churches and pastors. And so I was, I was thinking, oh, this isn't a big deal. And then I realized that uh, continuing to want to do this every single week is a gift from God and a blessing. So thank you for celebrating 20 years with me. That was a big surprise. Now let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, you do bless us with these wonderful words of life. Words from songs, words from psalms, words from scripture, words from one another. And these words encourage us and inspire us and bless us when we need them most. So God, help us to be encouraged and inspired and blessed this day. And thank you, God, for the privilege of prayer to come together on behalf of those who need those prayers the most. And God, we praise you for answered prayers. For Greg's brother, Brian, and for others that we name on our hearts before you. And God, we know that we have so many church family members and friends who are receiving comfort care and hospice care right now. God, we ask for your blessing to be upon them, giving them the comfort and the peace that they need as they make their transition to be with you. And God, for those who are recovering from surgery and medical procedures, for those who've been patiently waiting for healing in their lives. We thank you for your abiding presence. And today, God, we thank you for the gift of good news, the gospel message of Jesus that has the power to transform our lives. So God, Strengthen us this day and help us to embrace all of the ways that we can commit to studying and growing in our faith. God, be with us as we navigate this world, this very broken world, and as we see all the needs around us. God, allow the peace that passes all understanding to rest in places where there is violence and where there is chaos. And God, be with those who are recovering from natural disasters and remind us of your presence each and every moment. All these things we pray in the name of the one who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I do want to remind people that if you requested envelopes for this year, whether they are weekly or monthly, they are located in the back in front of Chapel Parlor. And also a reminder that we have our first uh, special offering for uh, the United Methodist Church, and that is Human Relations Day. And now, instead of having individual envelopes, we now just have one envelope that can be used for all of the special offerings. You just mark which one it is. But from now until the end of January, if you would like to give to that special offering, uh, please utilize the envelopes that also are located in the back. It's an opportunity for us to remember our connection as United Methodists and to remember that we work for peace and justice and we work to make sure that human rights 
are recognized and honored all around our world. In the name of Christ, let us share our gifts with the Lord at this time. I invite our ushers to receive them. rise and praise God. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we are and all that we have, that we may praise you with our whole lives. In your holy and perfect and loving name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated for the reading of the word of God today. Today's scripture lesson is written in the second chapter of Second Thessalonians beginning at the 13th verse. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our, through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, Stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word or mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. May God add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of this word. Amen. Thank you, Rocky. Let us pray. Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word, open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst, and open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Seven-year-old Cindy loved learning. Yet, first grade with Doris Windles was an adventure. Honestly, Mrs. Windles was very strict. And well, at that time, I found my voice, I found my strong will, and I found out that you cannot talk back to the teacher. 
to give me less time to talk out of turn, Mrs. Windles encouraged me to read stories. And I especially loved those choose-your-own-adventure ones that were just coming out. In addition to school, I also loved Sunday school. I loved learning about the Bible, learning about God and how Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Our faith journeys inspire our learning and they help us to grow in our discipleship. And in this new year, we are focusing on what it means to refresh our faith and to make spirituality a priority in our lives. Our passage today is a powerful one. It's full of great theology and so many nuggets of information for us to claim, including words like sanctifying and glory and grace, and including phrases like stand firm, hold fast, eternal encouragement, and good hope. Imagine what these words and phrases meant to the early Christians who heard them first. Now, the Apostle Paul recognized what was challenging the Thessalonians in terms of their faith. They were struggling to comprehend how they could experience the glory of Christ. They were focused so much on the contemplations of the end times in the future that they were losing sight of how to focus on living life with Christ in the present. In Paul's amazing way, his task was to encourage them on their journey. Now, Paul doesn't want these Christians to be alarmed or deceived by those future promises and what people say about them. He responds then to an earlier question about how they can keep from being easily shaken and alarmed. This is a great line of thought, isn't it? So how do we avoid getting sidetracked by the distractions and issues of the day that have that capacity to to stir us up and to divide us? As we further explore this particular passage, we think about what we need to claim most and learn from Paul's words. Now in her Bible commentary, Annette Brownlee says that this is a powerful reminder to the Thessalonians, and to us that God is in charge. And we must remember, recount, believe, and give thanks to God for choosing us as his beloved. God's love then comes with a call for God's people. And since we are loved and chosen, we have been given a purpose. In essence, then, this passage gives us a glimpse of the Christian life. It begins with God's call. And it develops then by our effort, which is helped by God himself and by the teaching, guidance, and example of other godly people. And these things produce amazing gifts. The consecration on earth, that we are set apart for God. And the second thing is salvation in heaven. Christians still believe and claim that Our lives live on in eternity. Even today, though, Christians feel feel, they feel this push and pull about thinking about the gift of eternal life that we will experience later while catching enough glimpse of it now to inspire us, encourage us, and motivate us. We need to claim today what God has done in Christ and how that leads us into action. We are called to stand firm then and hold fast to the teachings of the gospel. Christians need to stay focused on what Christ has done. Through his death and resurrection, he conquered sin and death. The cross of Christ rises above tragedy and conflict and violence. Now we know that humans have this innate desire for fight or flight. And Paul knew that those Thessalonian Christians had this instinct to do battle against the spiritual forces of wickedness. But likewise, to stand firm calls us not to take things into our own hands, but to remember that Christ's crucifixion fought the battle for us. We can stand firm and we can hold fast to the truth of Christ's victory on our behalf. And Paul recognized that the Thessalonians wanted comfort in their pain, suffering, and questions instead of strength. 
And so he prayed for them to have both God's comfort and God's strength. This is interesting, isn't it? Do we seek strength or do we seek comfort? Do we want to be relieved of the burdens that we face or do we want the strength to face them? It probably depends on what we're facing and what else is happening in our lives. But we know that people respond in very different ways to pain and suffering that they experience. For the Apostle Paul, the bottom line for the Thessalonians is this. God has loved us, called us, and chosen us so that we can inherit the heavenly promises and glory of Jesus Christ. And while we wait, we receive comfort and strength, grace, encouragement, and hope. That is the bottom line for us today, too. Now, I have shared in the past that I believe that, that we get just a little glimpse of the glory of Christ every once in a while so that we don't feel like we're waiting in vain. Because we are loved and called and chosen, we are to work to bring a little bit of this heaven to earth every single day. So how do we do this? We love God and we love our neighbor as ourselves. This is a very broken world and so we are called to reach out to our neighbors to bring some love and light to them. We must also act with courage and boldness when it comes to sharing compassion and mercy and working for peace and justice. We know that we are so good at acts of compassion and mercy because they are easy. We collect coins for peanut and stretch, right? We collect PB and J, items for the food pantries and our blessing box. We share gently used books for the lending libraries in our town. We visit people when they are sick. Acts of compassion and mercy are easiest for us to do, and we must continue to do them. But we also must work for peace and justice. We must take a serious look at our community and consider the needs, like recognizing the fact that we have a very high poverty rate. We have an equally high suicide rate. We need to think about the root causes of these and other challenges and consider the justice issues that are before us, like low-paying jobs, the costs of health insurance. Sometimes these things seem too big for us to tackle, and yet together we can take small steps to make a big difference. Another challenge before us is fatigue. Many people can easily get compassion fatigue or justice-making fatigue, or peacekeeping fatigue. Tirelessly working for issues before us can be overwhelming. That's when we need to hit that refresh button and renew our minds, our hearts, and our spirits. Last week we talked about this refresh in terms of our worship, and today we want to think about how we can stand firm and hold fast to the gospel in terms of our study. We know that we get out of our faith what we put into it, and we know that we get out of our study what we put into it. God's word was given to us to explore, to reflect, to learn, and to grow. Our church, this church, preaches small groups. We know that, that people can experience Christian encouragement and support, accountability, and much-needed fellowship when they participate in a small group. And some people find these small groups in coffee clutches or community organizations, yet we can especially find these groups in the life of the church. As you hit the refresh button, consider how you can commit to getting the Word of God, getting in the Word of God more into your life. Most Bible in one year plans require about 15 minutes per day. That offers the maximum benefit for a minimum effort. And do you want to get the most out of your study in a study of the Bible through your devotions, worship, and small groups? I found a list of some things. It says, begin your study with prayer. Ask God to speak to you. 
Remember that you don't have to start in the beginning with Genesis. You can start anywhere in the Bible and begin studying. Choose a topic that you're interested in or even a character that you want to get to know. Write down what you learn. Keep a journal so that you can continue to reflect on scriptures from worship, personal devotions, and your Bible studies. Listen to the Bible being read with a phone app or audiobook. Some of your favorite celebrities are paid to read the Bible. And it's wonderful to listen to their voices and to hear God's word in a new way. Use resources like Bible commentaries, dictionaries, and online sources as you're reading and discovering new, new truths. And pause and listen. Ask yourself, what is God calling me to hear? What is God calling me to understand? And what is God calling me to do? as a result of a passage. Right now, our church is also offering the Alpha Course. If you haven't signed up yet, but you feel the Lord tugging at you to participate, it's not too late. It's never too late to learn and to grow spiritually. In fact, it really does make a kingdom difference and allow you to focus on God's eternal promises right now and for later. You know, I told you that seven-year-old Cindy loved Sunday school and loved school. But I have to say that seven-year-old Cindy also learned some really hard lessons in life. Like how death is final, that grief is complicated and difficult. And sometimes life keeps you from growing up with your family. I hadn't seen my cousin Kelly since I was seven years old. It was her dad who died in the car accident with my grandmother. My sister recently connected with Kelly in California, and she just came back to Nebraska this past week. So even 51-year-old Cindy can learn new things, like it's never too late to reconnect and to reconcile. You know, if I think about it, I learned that in church. And I learned that in Sunday school. And I had learned that. And it was further emphasized in nearly every small group that I've ever engaged in. Remember, God has loved us, called us, and chosen us so that we can inherit heavenly promises and the glory of Jesus Christ, experiencing them in the present and in the future. Thanks be to God, and may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen. Let us rise as we sing in Christ alone.